Hello, this is Richard Tomlin. Uh, glad you are able to join us this evening. Uh, hopefully we can be a blessing to you that something would be said or done that would encourage, that would strengthen, that would lift you up. I would like to share with you for the next few minutes just a few thoughts that we have and uh, some uh, encouragement from the Word of God, some things from the Word of God that hopefully would be a help to you. Lord, as we come to you, we ask that you would anoint us, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds to thy word, Lord, to the things that you would have us to see and hear. Lord, we ask you to teach us, to guide us, and to help us. Lord, we know that without you, we can do nothing. Lord, I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you for your help. I thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, be with us. Give us thy spirit, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, up until just recent times, uh, most people uh, made their living and had their daily sustenance from farming and from tilling the land and from working the land. Something really that many people in the time that we live don't even really have much of a concept of but I can remember growing up on a farm uh, it wasn't our farm we were sharecroppers and I remember my dad worked that farm and uh, he worked a couple of other jobs but he still when he wasn't doing that he worked the farm and it seemed like there was always something to do he rarely had a day off or was able to take time off because there's always something to do it took work, it took effort. The, the farm didn't just run itself. A lot of effort had to go into it. But as long as that effort was made and the garden was kept rid of weeds and hold out and everything was done as it should be and the animals were fed and cared for, as long as those things were done, then there came a harvest time when those fruits, the food, was all gathered in. The land provided so long as the land was worked, so long as that effort was put in to prepare the soil and plant the seed and fertilize the ground and keep the weeds out. Then the Lord blessed it and it grew and it brought forth fruit. It brought forth a harvest. It brought forth food and sustenance. Now the point that I'm trying to get across is this. Our Christian walk works the same way. In the book of Proverbs, in the 24th chapter, starting in the 30th verse, the Bible says this, I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw, and considered it well, I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Now we know that it's the Lord who saves us. We know we can't save ourselves. But once he saves us, he gives us a work to do. You see, the Lord has commanded us to, to be sober, to be awake, to be watchful. In Mark uh, chapter 13, starting in verse 34, it says, For the Son of Man is as a man taken a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore. For ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest come and suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. The Lord sows the seed in our heart, and as it begins to grow, we need to be diligent to make sure that we keep the weeds out of our garden. And I'm talking about the garden of our heart. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 12, starting in verse 14, it says, Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. 
looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 5. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. And as we read in Luke chapter 10 verse 2, it says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. In the book of Jeremiah, in the fourth chapter, in the third verse, it says, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. In Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 5, the Lord spoke a parable about a sower. And it says, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And then on down in verse 11, he said, Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. You see, we need to be like those in the next verse, in verse 15. It says, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. You see, you just don't throw a seed in the ground and then harvest it the same day, or even the next day, or even the next week. It takes time, it takes patience, it takes work and effort. And it's not so much that we're trying to make the seed grow. God does that. What we're doing is keeping the things out in a way that would hinder its growth. And once again in the book of Proverbs, in the sixth chapter, starting at verse six, it says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. And in Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 it says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Now is not a time to sleep, but to be awake, to be sober, to be working our garden, to be tilling, to be getting rid of the weeds and the thorns and the thistles and that root of bitterness that springs up and defiles us. We need to be diligent and guard against those things. We need to guard our heart. In Mark seven 
verse 20, starting in verse 20, it says, And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. All these things are the weeds in the garden. These are the things that need to be rooted up, that need to be pulled up and cast away. It's not a time to be slothful. It's not a time to be asleep, but a time to be sober, to be working diligently, keeping the ground good, keeping our hearts and our minds clean and pure. If we want a good and bountiful harvest, we cannot be slothful. We cannot be lazy. We must diligently labor to keep the weeds and the thorns and the thistles and those things that defile out of the garden of our heart. Lord, we thank you for planting the seed in our heart. We thank you, Lord, for providing the rain, Lord, and for helping us. We thank you, Lord, for providing the increase. Help us to be diligent, Lord. And to get rid of those things, Lord, that should not be in our heart, in our mind. And Lord, may we not be slothful, but diligent and laborers together, Lord, in thy harvest. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and be sure to tune in again next week. My son Joshua will have another message for you. Until then, thank you and God bless.